So myeloma is a form of blood cancer, yeah? And it's a form of blood cancer which affects a particular type of white cell in the body known as plasma cells. So in a normal person, plasma cells actually play a very important role because plasma cells produce a type of uh, protein in the body called antibodies. And antibodies circulate in our body and they help us to fight infections. However, in the situation of myeloma, what happens is that these plasma cells become abnormal and they start to proliferate and expand in places that they shouldn't be. Particularly in the bone marrow, what happens is that plasma cells expand and they stop the function of the normal bone marrow. So the normal bone marrow cells start to fall. In addition, myeloma can infiltrate parts of the body's tissues and when they do that, they can affect the end organ functions. So when we look at the signs and symptoms of myeloma, we tend to think of the acronym CRAB, C-R-A-B. Uh, so one of the first symptoms we sometimes notice is C, which is hypercalcemia. Patients with myeloma sometimes can have a very high calcium level in the body. And this is because these abnormal plasma cells can eat at the bone and cause the calcium levels to increase. When you have a high calcium level, patients can have symptoms such as headaches, bone pains, and lots of discomfort. The other thing which can happen is R, which is renal insufficiency or renal failure. Because when the protein, proteins which are secreted by uh, plasma cells get too high, they can clog up the kidneys and they can cause the kidneys to stop functioning. So patients can start pre presenting with fatigue and can present with symptoms of uh, renal failure from that. In addition, patients can have A, which is anemia. So the, when the plasma cells expand in the bone marrow, they can affect the function of the bone marrow. So patients can become anemic, their blood count can fall, and patients can become fatigued. They can feel extremely tired and short of breath. Other, other white, cells, uh, white cells and platelets in the bone marrow can be affected as well. So patients can have symptoms such as infections as well as bleeding. And finally, uh, myeloma can affect B, the bones. So what happens particularly in myeloma is that the plasma cells can eat away at parts of the bone, such as the spine, the skull, or even the long bones. So patients can sometimes present with bone pain, and in severe cases, patients sometimes present with unexpected fractures. So there are several levels of tests which are needed to reach a diagnosis of multiple myeloma. Uh, up front, sometimes a, a blood test will give us some clues as to whether or not a patient has multiple myeloma. The clues could be that the patient is anemic, uh, has evidence of kidney impairment and sometimes the protein levels in these patients can be very high and that gives us a clue that this patient may have a condition such as myeloma. Additional tests need to be done to confirm this diagnosis and we do some specific urine tests to see if the patients are secreting abnormal proteins in the urine. In addition, sometimes we will do uh, tests, radiological tests to see whether the bones are infected. So this could in involve a test such as a skeletal survey where we take x-rays of the whole body. And more recently, there's data to suggest that uh, PET CT scans are very good at picking up the uh, presence of myeloma deposits all through the body. Finally, one of the key tests that we would do if we suspect someone has myeloma is a bone marrow test, where we uh, pass a needle into the bone marrow to assess the bone marrow to see if there's an abnormal presence of uh, plasma cells there. So when we talk about the treatment options for myeloma, we need to think about what the aims of treatment are first. And, and the aims of treatment for myeloma tend to be twofold. Uh, the first, first objective of treatment is to stabilize the disease and reduce the impact on end organ function. Because as mentioned before, the plasma cells can infiltrate the different organs and cause end organ damage. The other key goal of myeloma is always to try to eradicate the disease. So try to, if possible, clear the disease away or gain as great control as we can of the disease. So how do we treat patients with myeloma? So with modern therapy nowadays, treatment of myeloma involves the use of a combination of different drugs to achieve the best control possible. Uh, treatment for myeloma is divided into several phases. The first phase of treatment is what we call induction therapy. And induction therapy, general, in general speaking, nowadays we tend to use a combination of three or four different drugs to hit the plasma cells to try to eradicate them as much as possible. Uh, nowadays, a lot of new drugs which are available for the treatment of myeloma. Uh, there are some very specific antibody drugs which are used, such as a drug called daratumumab. In addition, there are certain drugs which modulate the bone marrow, and there are drugs which are known such as lenalidomide or pomalidomide, together with drugs such as Velcade, which are staples of the treatment of myeloma. 
Uh, once induction treatment is completed, in the majority of cases, hopefully we manage to eradicate most of the disease in this patient. Then we move on to a phase of consolidation treatment where we try to stabilize the disease and prevent the disease from coming back. This can be done by giving more chemotherapy and targeted therapy. And in some patients who are fit and well, we may offer them a form of treatment called an autologous stem cell transplant as well. When a patient has completed induction and consolidation treatment, we tend to put treat patients on a combination of a lower dose of drugs for a longer period of time. And this phase of treatment is known as maintenance treatment. A maintenance treatment nowadays can extend from a period of anything from one to five years. And this aims to prevent the relapse of the disease. There are other newer forms of treatment for myeloma which are now available in this very exciting field. One of the interesting areas is in the field called CAR T-cell therapy, which is a form of cellular therapy. And there are many companies which are now producing CAR T-cell products, which are going through clinical trials and which will probably be available for patients in the near future. When we look at the prognosis of patients with multiple myeloma, uh, patients nowadays have a multitude of different treatment options available for them. While there are a small proportion of patients who unfortunately still fail to respond to treatment and have a rapid decline in their, out, in their performance and outcomes, the majority of patients with myeloma actually can enjoy a very good quality of life nowadays with the various treatment options available. So in addition, there are many new drugs which are coming out in the field of myeloma, so we can be very optimistic for multiple myeloma patients in terms of their long-term uh, outcomes.